I'm Kathy. Investing strategies and priorities can vary significantly across different generational groups due to factors like life stage, financial goals, and economic conditions. I'm covering the breakdown of key investing topics that each group should be aware of over the next four videos. Today I'm covering baby boomers, so hang out and listen to see if you can answer three questions on generational investing strategies. Baby boomers, those born between 46 and 64, as baby boomers approach or enter retirement, you need to review your retirement investment strategies, as it becomes crucial to shift your focus from accumulating wealth to creating steady income streams that can sustain you throughout your golden years. One effective strategy is to convert a portion of savings into annuities, which can provide guaranteed income for life or a specific period. Annuities can be particularly beneficial as they help mitigate the risk of outliving your savings, offering you a predictable cash flow that can cover your essential expenses. Another strategy involves investing in dividend-paying stocks. These stocks offer dual advantage of potential capital appreciation and regular income through dividends. By building a diversified portfolio of dividend-paying stocks, you can generate a steady stream of income while also benefiting from the growth potential of these equities or stocks. It's important for boomers to consider your risk tolerance, financial goals, and the longevity of your retirement when deciding how much to allocate for each strategy. And as always, consulting with a financial advisor can help tailor these strategies to your individual needs, ensuring a more secure and comfortable retirement. Next, Understanding required minimum distributions, or RMDs, is essential for those who have saved in tax-deferred retirement accounts, such as traditional IRAs or 401ks. Because once individuals reach the age of 73, as of 2023, you're required by the IRS to begin withdrawing a minimum amount each year from these accounts. The amount of RMD is calculated based on the account balance at the end of the previous year and the account holder's life expectancy as determined by IRS tables. Failing to make these required distributions on time can lead to significant financial consequences. If the RMD is not withdrawn by the deadline, which is generally December 31st each year, you might face a tax penalty of up to 25% of the amount that you should have withdrawn. So if you should have withdrawn $10,000, you're gonna owe $2,500 in penalties. However, this penalty can be reduced to 10% if the mistake is corrected in a timely manner and has reasonable cause, which might include this is your first withdrawal and you didn't realize it. To avoid these penalties though, you must plan carefully, ensure you understand the rules surrounding the RMDs, and consider integrating RMDs into your broader retirement income strategy. Consulting with a financial advisor can help you as your retirees navigate requirements and optimize your withdrawals to minimize your tax impact. Planning for healthcare expenses is also a critical aspect of retirement planning, especially as medical costs continue to rise. For retirees, healthcare can become one of the most significant expenses due to increased medical needs and longer life expectancies. This includes not only your routine medical care and prescription drugs, but also unexpected illnesses or accidents. Furthermore, long-term care, which may be needed for chronic illness or disabilities, can be particularly costful. Understanding these potential expenses and preparing for them is essential for financial stability during retirement. To plan effectively for your healthcare costs, you should consider several strategies. Enrolling in Medicare is a starting point for most people, but it's also important to understand the different parts of Medicare and what each part covers. Many choose to supplement their Medicare coverage with Medigap policies or Medicare Advantage plans to help cover their out-of-pocket expenses. Additionally, long-term care insurance can provide financial protection against the high costs of extended care services, such as nursing home care or in-home health aids, which are typically not covered by Medicare. Building a health care contingency fund and exploring tax advantage savings options like health savings accounts, HSAs, can also be beneficial. By carefully planning for health care and long-term care costs, retirees can better protect their savings and maintain the quality of life. Estate planning is a vital process that ensures that an individual's assets are distributed according to your wishes after your death, while also minimizing taxes and legal complications for your heirs. Proper estate planning involves more than just writing a will. It includes a range of strategies and tools, such as trusts, 
beneficiary designations, power of attorneys, and your healthcare directives. These tools will help manage an individual's financial and personal affairs during your lifetime and beyond, providing clarity and direction to your loved ones and reducing potential conflicts. One of the primary goals of estate planning is to minimize the tax burden of your beneficiaries. Strategies such as gifting your assets during your lifetime, setting up irrevocable trusts, or utilizing marital deductions can significantly reduce estate taxes and ensure that more of your estate is preserved for your heirs. Additionally, well-structured estate plans can help avoid probate, a potentially lengthy and costly legal process that can delay the distribution of your assets. By carefully planning and regularly updating your estate plans, you can ensure that your assets are protected and transfer smoothly according to your specific wishes, while also providing peace of mind for yourself and your loved ones. Consulting with an estate planning attorney can really help in crafting a comprehensive plan tailored to your own unique needs and circumstances. Each generational group faces a unique investing challenge, and baby boomers need to focus on retirement income and estate planning during this time of your life. Now here are the three questions for you to answer. Why might dividend stocks be helpful to you? Why do you need more than just a will? And at what age do you need to start taking your RMDs? I'm Kathy, and I'm grateful to be a part of your journey to financial empowerment. Please let me know the topics you'd like covered in the comments. And if you're new here, please subscribe. It really helps me so that you too can improve the way that you think about your relationship with money.